Hello fellow artists, uh, it's Jess again. I thought I would do a new video since my first one was quite popular on using um, watercolour techniques in Photoshop. So this time I'm going to do an example of this fawn I drew a while ago and uh, we're going to make him into a digital watercolour painting. So this I drew by hand and uh, in pencil and paper and I scanned it into my computer and um, have uploaded it into Photoshop. So let's get started. Okay, we're in Adobe Photoshop CC. I'm going to go up to File, New. And I'm going to change my canvas size to 8 by 8. Resolution at 300 pixels per inch. And I would like my color mode to be CMYK as I am a children's book illustrator and uh, most everything we do is translated to uh, print, which CMYK is what you want for printing. Okay. Now over here, I'm just going to quickly run through this again. We are going to make a new group and then we're going to add uh, this right here, which is the mask. And um, then up here, go to edit, fill, pattern. You want to do a pattern. Now, if you haven't already, go into your custom pattern box, if this is the first time you've ever done it, and go to this little whirly gig here, click on artist surfaces and you want to press append and it will add all these new fantastic textures for artists. Okay, It's the second one from the end, gauche light on watercolour, which would be very similar to you using a normal heavy watercolour paper. Press that and OK. Now as you can see it filled our box with a grey here and we're going to now change that a little bit. We're going to make our paper lighter because we don't want our paper to be this dark. Command L and just swing this white arrow to the middle of your graph where the black is. Right in the middle there. Graph, it doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see it made the box lighter white. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and add a new layer and we're going to make this layer not normal but multiply. Okay, this is going to be for our drawing. So let's go back to that uh, fawn. There he is. I'm going to grab the lasso tool right here and trace around him. Okay, there he is. Command C for copy and Command V to paste him. There he is. He's too small though. So we're going to go to Command T to change his size and to make him bigger without changing his proportions I'm going to hold down the shift key and the option key to keep him in the center of the page. Okay that would be great. Press OK. Now I don't like this dirty paper color going around him so we're going to change it to make it white. All right. By doing, to do that we're going to go to command L which is the levels. Go to the white eyedropper and click on the lightest part of your drawing which is the paper here and that just got rid of that dirty paper look. Okay, perfect so that's it that is your original drawing I don't think many people know that you can just use an actual pencil drawing and make it into digital art you don't have to just start in Photoshop because I know a lot of us find it much easier to still do the old traditional way of uh, pencil and paper I know I do Plus, I really love the look of a pencil. Now, this is our drawing layer. I'm going to rename this Drawing. Okay, we're going to add a new layer. And this is going to be our color layer, which will go on top of him. So, I like to do separate layers so that if I made a mistake, all I'd have to do is delete the layer on top if I didn't like the way the color came out. But I'm always going to keep the drawing as its own separate layer and I'm never going to touch that. I can clean it up, but I'm not going to put the color directly on this layer. So we have a new layer called color. I'm going to change it from normal to multiply. That will make it a more transparent look, so the color will be more like an actual watercolor. Okay, so let's get started. I always start with the, light, the lightest color first, that's what you want to do because you're layering color on, so you want to go lighter to darker. Always remember light to dark. Now, 
where's the light coming from in this picture? Well, it's coming from the right side, as you can see by my drawing. We've got shadows to the left here. So we're going to start by highlighting the lightest areas. Go ahead to your color picker. And we're going to go to the top here. I think I'm going to go for kind of a yellowish, pale yellow. Okay. Paintbrush. I use one type of paintbrush only. I do not use a bunch of different fancy paintbrushes because I like to rely on my talent, not on brushes. So this is a watercolor brush. And I've got it at 70. That's a pretty good size. And we'll start with the color. So I want you to hit all the areas that are the lightest. This is going to be your warm colors where the sun is hitting this fawn, all the highlighted areas, okay? This is where your powers of observation come in handy. Go out and look at the world and see how does light fall on an object? Okay, I think that's good. I'm gonna add a one more layer of color as you can see if you look carefully. This is the exact same color, but it's adding a little more color on top, just like you would with a, a natural watercolor painting. Okay, <clears throat> now I'm actually gonna go for the cold colors. So that's gonna be the shadows. I'm gonna go to a kind of aqua color. Okay, and I'm just gonna hit anywhere that there might be a shadow. It's gonna have white here, so I'm gonna put a shadow in here. Later I'll have to come back and erase these little white spots and uh, redo this blue, but I like to start with blocking in all my colors. Okay, now I'm gonna do this quickly because I don't wanna to take too long on this for you, just to give you a general idea. Let's block in the colors. We've gone for a orangey brown now, still lighter lighter colors. Just go ahead and go right over the top of the colors that you did till you get what you want. Okay. Now one thing you do need to bear in mind when you're working with this particular technique in this brush um, is that you need to hold your pen down. You cannot lift it up and down and up and down. Because what happens when you do that is this. Every time you pick it up, you are adding another layer. And now it's kind of messy looking. So I'm going to delete this. Okay. So just hold your pen down until you've blocked in everywhere you want that particular color. And then when you're happy with it, and you want to add your next layer of color, you can let go and go for the next one. Okay. And let go and then on to the next. As you can see, I'm making a kind of gradient here from lighter to darker. I think it's time to actually get a new color. I think his nose would have quite a lot of color in it. Behind his ears. Maybe a bit inside as well. Okay, let's go ahead and get a darker color. Maybe a little redder. Okay. This is such a fun technique. It's amazing what you can do in Photoshop these days. Okay. Now, for the finishing touches, I'm going to blend all these colors together. And then we'll just hit the white a little bit. So we're going to go here to Blend Fast. It's a Blend Fast tool. It does not come with Photoshop, so you will need to download it. And I'll put a link um, for you to download. And you're going to blend it. 
don't go crazy on blending though because you want to keep some of this lovely brush strokes so it looks like it's still actually a painting. Okay. I'm going to add a bit more colour around his cheeks. His nose, maybe a bit more through there. There we go. Now I'm just going to hit some shadows. So I'm going to go to a blue, I know, blue. But it's not going to look blue because I'm layering it on top of these reddish browns. But it does make a nice shadow. Okay. Blend that again. Blending. I would spend a lot more time on this, but you get a general idea of what I'm going for. Now, go ahead and we'll go to the eraser and we'll keep it, we have it on 61% uh, opacity, which is fine. I don't want it to be full opacity, but I still want to see a little bit of the color come through. And obviously, you would see it whiter where uh, the light is really hitting it, so I'm going to over the top of this more than once. But down here where it's in shadow, I don't want that to be stark white because it's still in shadow. So I'm going to erase it, but only once. And then when I'm done, I'm going to actually color a little blue into there to make it really look like it's a shadow. So I'll go back to my blue. Now you're like, what? But your brain is telling you that's still white, it's just in shadow. So it really adds to that light effect. Artists have to figure this all out. How do you make it look like that? Well, this is one way of doing it. Isn't that clever? Oh, I just love it. So now it really looks like this is in shadow and this is where the light is hitting. Okay. Well, there you go. That's just a basic um, beginning of this little guy. I would then probably outline him. Um, to give you an idea, this is another one I did. He's a fox. And I like to outline my art as I'm an illustrator. So I went to, with lots of um, sketchy drawing here on top. Um, but yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and give it a try yourself because it's really a lot of fun. Okay, have a great day.